Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another Historic Games video. Today we're taking a look at a black-white humans deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. This is a disruptive creature tribal deck featuring a lot of hand disruption in fact with four copies of Thoughtseize as well as two copies of Inquisition of Kozilek from the recent Mystical Archives as well as four copies of Kitesail Freebooter, the 1-2 flyer that when it enters the battlefield the opponent has to reveal their hand and we choose a non-creature non-land card from it and exile it until the Freebooter leaves the battlefield. And then besides all our hand disruption, we also have some taxation effects with four copies of Thalia Guardian of Thraben, the 2-1 legendary human soldier with first strike, making non-creature spells cost one generic mana more to cast for everyone, as well as two copies of Elite Spellbinder from Strixhaven, the 3-1 flyer, that when it enters the battlefield we can look at the opponent's hand and exile a non-land card from it, and for as long as that card remains exiled, the opponent can play it at an increased cost of two generic mana even after the Spellbinder leaves the battlefield. And then besides all these taxation and hand disruption effects, our deck can also kill relatively quickly, thanks to our anthem effects, with four copies of Banalish Marshal, giving other creatures we control plus one plus one, and the triple white mana cost might seem a little bit prohibitive in this deck, but despite having these black one drops that we want to cast on turn one, we can usually still play Banalish Marshal on turn three, thanks to all these black white dual lands in the mana base, including the new Snarl, which is supported by Godless Shrine and ten basic planes, and then General Kudro, another lord, giving other humans we control plus one plus one, and has some other useful abilities on top. And then Silver Quill Silencer is also very synergistic in this deck, since we have so many effects that let us take a look at the opponent's hand as a 3-2 human cleric that as it enters a battlefield we choose a non-land card name, and whenever an opponent casts a spell with the chosen name, they lose three life and we get to draw a card. And then rounding out the deck, we have four copies of Thraben Inspector as a nice one drop that will get pumped by our various anthem effects. And when it enters the battlefield, we can investigate, meaning we get a clue token, which we can sacrifice for two mana to draw a card. And then four copies of Dire Tactics as our spot removal spell of choice, exiling target creature. And if we control a human, we don't lose any life, otherwise, we lose life equal to that creature's toughness. And then a mana base, as we mentioned, lots of black-white dual lands with our Snarl, four copies of Godless Shrine, four copies of Concealed Courtyard, and two of the Bright Climb Pathway, as well as ten basic planes. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw with a reasonable hand. Turn one Inspector into turn two, probably Thalia. Facing steam vents. So hopefully this is a combo deck where Thalia and Freebooter shine. Goblin Electromancer. Well, Thalia kind of offsets the Electromancer in a way. So maybe an Arclight Phoenix deck. Opponent stomps Thalia. And adventures a Lovestruck Beast. Alright, so this turn we'll play Kudro. Kudro instead of Marshall since it's legendary, so I'm less sad if it dies and we draw another one. And then next turn we can double spell Freebooter into Silencer. And Inspector can attack. So not entirely sure what deck our opponent's playing. Electromancer, not something you often see in these adventure decks. Beanstalk Giant for ramp. So Silencer can still name one of the adventure creatures, which is good value. And a Fae of Wishes to get a sideboard card. But we're gonna take that away with Freebooter. Alright, let's have a look first. And they've got a Brazen Borrower in hand. So that can bounce my Freebooter and still let them cast Escape. So I probably Silencer on Petty Theft instead of one of their creatures then. 
since that's a likely sequence for them to run out next turn. And then... I kind of don't mind Kudra trading for Electromancer and a token, since we have another one in hand. And that will prevent a sequence of petty theft into escape. Opponent just jumps. And we have to name the actual adventure side here instead of Brazen Borrower. So we get to trigger Silencer at least. Thoughtsy is not great since all the opponent's cards are exiled. They picked up Stomp, Innkeeper. At least with Kudro or Creature Survive Stomp. But Innkeeper is going to provide a lot of value. So these are the cards that they can still adventure potentially. Alright, so probably go for replay freebooter, play marshal. Small chance we need to thought seize instead. Alright, just to land in hand. Just wanna pressure them before they take over with all their card advantage. Right, Innkeeper has to chump. If we can force him to chump, that's a good thing. Opponent falls to two. So now Freebooter is potentially lethal. Although they do still have some flying blockers. Still have a clue token we can sacrifice. Bowden plays a Fey to block Freebooter, draws a card with Innkeeper. So this is a last turn they can take advantage of the cards exiled with Escape. Plays Beast. Now Beast we can also potentially destroy with Kudro's ability. Although that requires a hefty sacrifice. Opponent stomps our face for one mana, thanks to Electromancer. Although they need to make another blocker, otherwise they're dead on board. They can cast Petty Theft, so that's not a concern. And we can even double check by Thought Seizing Firsts to make sure the coast is clear. And yeah, opponent dies to Silencer. Alright, sweet, so beat Teamer Adventures after they manage to go off onto the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Allurus of the Dream Den deck, and we've got Thoughtseize into Silencer to start out. Uh -huh, and this might be a red white burn deck. So taking two of Thoughtseize, a little painful, but still probably worth it here. Double Lightning Helix, Wizard's Lightning, and another Soul Scar Mage. Opponent is missing white mana. So Wizard's Lightning is probably the pick. Although, let's see. Next turn, our opponent's probably playing another Soul Scar Mage. They have Wizard's Lightning for my Silencer if I don't take it. What if I take the Soul Scar Mage instead? And then play Silencer naming Wizard's Lightning? Because. Dire Tactics is awkward if we don't have a creature in play. So the Soul Scar Mages could end up dealing more damage than the Lightning. And if Silencer trades for a burn spell and draws me a card, I'm pretty happy. So we'll take the Mage, actually. Alright, opponent's just gonna Wizard Sliding my face. Well, in that case, I can silence her on Lightning Helix. Or I could go double Thraben Inspector. Now we'll name Lightning Helix. All 
Right, they found white mana. So we take two. And now I probably want to inspect her plus dire tactics. And I'll just do this now before they get to untap and get rid of my human. Alright, so Lurus is going to come into play next turn. And then for now, a lot of godless shrines, sadly. Don't want to take two. So I'll just play Kudro, hit for two. They can Lightning Helix, but then at least they're not playing Lurus. And we can exile Soul Mage, which is also pretty relevant. Right, it's going to be a Skewer the Critics on Kudra, keeping Lightning Helix available. And we drew a backup. So. Could play Kudro into Inspector. Opponent's gonna just Lightning Helix Kudro as soon as they get the chance. So there is an argument for keeping Kudro until after they fire off the Helix and maybe just draw and play Inspector this turn. Maybe find a Freebooter which will force the issue. So let's attack and play another Inspector plus a Planes. Alright, put on Dosfar of Helix on Inspector since they're falling behind, and now Kudro can potentially take over. Lurus doesn't have any creatures to get back. Although Soulscar Mage potentially an issue. Alright, Thought Seizes late to the party. But I can play two Lords this turn, which protects them from a three damage burn spell as well. So that's probably worth taking two. Kudra first to exile more stuff. Although it probably doesn't matter too much. Yeah, we'll just play Marshall. And then Inspector could attack. Now Soulscar Mage can shrink down my creatures. Another Thought sees a draw. That's not great, but uh, Spectre can keep attacking. Do we want to trade one of our lords for the opponent's two creatures is a question. Maybe. Attack with Marshall, keep Kudro back. Opponent just takes it. Opponent might have been playing around instant speed removal as well. Alright, light of the stage could be good for them. Let's see what they find. Soulscar Mage and Shock, so I can't actually block profitably with Kudra anymore. I guess it would trade for Lurus. So they could save Shock for next turn, potentially, or they could force a trade. Right, Soulscar Mage I'll have to take. And they're gonna shrink down Kudro. So now what? We're at six. Double soul scar in play. Opponent's at eight. So if I attack with everyone, we do force them to block. They could just jump with the soul scar mage and a replay it with Lurus, so that doesn't really help my cause. So I might be forced to stay back until I draw a creature to exile soul scar mage right away. 
which is a little unfortunate. Because we're giving the burn deck more time to draw burn spells. Ramana Prunes is two more damage. And we keep drawing lines. Well, probably no point in playing the courtyard here. Now, if this is a type of position where it would be nice to have a Castle Ardenvale to pump out human tokens, although it is important to keep the basic land count high enough for the Snarls to come into play untapped consistently, and most games in Historic don't really get to this stage. Lumamancer, another creature, so now if they draw a burn spell, we could just be dead. Right, Inspector, not a bad draw. I have to draw first to see if I draw another creature before I can consider an attack. Alright, now that we drew Spellbinder, I could get a little bit more aggressive, because we'll get to exile whatever creature the opponent jumps with. So let's say I attack with Thraben Inspector. That seems reasonable. They can block with Lurus Soulscar, but then we get rid of Lurus. And now we get rid of the creature. All right. Can also use Kudra's ability potentially, but that's a last resort. So they must have drawn an action spell here, deciding what to do. Pillar of Flame finishes off Kudro. Opponent passes and a Silver Quill Silencer to draw. So now if they jump with Soulscar Mage, we can name it with Silencer. So how aggressive can I get? Let's say I attack with Spellbinder and Inspector. Opponent takes six down to two. Play Silencer. Then I'm not necessarily dead next turn. Yeah, that seems fine. Alright, opponent just blocks with Lurus. So now Silencer probably names a burn spell, and we have to decide which one. So they've already played double lightning helix, they've only played one shock, I imagine they have four of those. Light of the stage, they have three left in the deck. That's another bad one if they hit it. And Wizard's Lightning, they've only used one. So it's probably either Wizard's Lightning or Light of the Stage here. So which one would be worse for me? Well, Light of the Stage, probably. So let's name that. No attacks, and a Dire Tactics is an awesome draw. Alright, so now we probably Dire Tactics Soulscar Mage. Even if they kill my Banalish Marshal block, they would still be taking four. Hmm, that's a little risky, actually. So maybe play it a little safer. Let's see, if I send these two, we force a chump. If they kill Spellbinder... And double block, we're happy. If they kill Marshall, then I can still Dire Tactics and block. So this is probably fine. Pwn goes for the double block. So I imagine there's an instant speed burn spell incoming. 
Alright, Wizard's Lightning. So we'll exile a mage and then they'll end up trading. Alright, so Wizard's Lightning turns out would have been the better name with Silencer there. But we're at 4, opponent's facing 4 damage. Lava Runner has to stay on defense. But I also can force a block, so we're just hitting with Spellbinder and then trying to close out next turn. This has been a nail biter. And a clever Lumamancer is not gonna cut it, and our opponent explodes. Oof, so very tense game here against the Red White Burn. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. Lots of hand disruption, followed by a bit of removal and Kudro. Lead with Inquisition, keep thought seize for later. And our opponent's playing blue white control. Mindstone Authority Baffling End and then Wrath to Fairy in hand, so probably gonna take Wrath with Freebooter. Thoughtseize can take Teferi, and then now we take Baffling End over Mindstone. Silencer also useful. So I could silencer on Mindstone first. Which is probably the card they want to play on turn 2. Our opponent thinking long and hard eventually decides to run out Mindstone. And pick up another Freebooter. Alright, hopefully they don't have double Wrath of God in hand. Alright, it's just a Shark Typhoon. So we'll take the Wrath. And then next turn we have to take Teferi. Opponent runs out authority, so now they can cycle Shark Typhoon to ambush any of my creatures at least. And I think I prefer Freebooter over Inspector plus Thoughtseize. And Shark Typhoon we can handle with our Dire Tactics as well. So our opponent's top decking, but if they top deck uh, Wrath of God we're in trouble. Opponent passes with a plan of cycling Shark Typhoon, no doubt. So we're just gonna keep up Dire Tactics. Alright, so if we draw land, we could potentially kill them next turn with Kudro. Dream Trawler. Alright, that's a problem. So, I can use Dire Tactics to force them to discard to get in for 5. So, let's say I cast Dire Tactics, they tap down Dream Trawler, discard, I hit them for 5 down to 1. Next turn our opponent draws, attacks, and hits us for 5, gaining 5, up to 6 life again, and then we play Kudro and hopefully kill them if they didn't draw any interaction. If I had another black source I could maybe thought seize into Dire Tactics to exile the Trawler if they have a non-land card in hand, but sadly that's not the case. And we also get to add an Inspector to the board, so... Yeah, I think we Dark Tactics. I guess my opponent gains one off Authority if I play Inspector 2 here. 
All right, they had a counter spell in hand. Still worth it to play Inspector, I think. All right, let's see if we're dead. Trawler attacks. So our point is up to seven. If we draw Swamp, we can Thought Seize first. Uh-oh, I don't have basic Swamp in the deck, so if they Field of Ruin my Snarl, we're in trouble. All right, I get to untap, just gonna slam Kudro here. And hope there's no Settled Wreckage. Opponent draws with Mind Stone a response. And attack. Maybe another Shark Typhoon cycled. Alright, and our opponent explodes. Very close game here. Lots of things could have gone wrong, but luckily things lined up just right. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine hand. A bit painful with double Godless Shrine Thoughtseize, but gotta pay a price for information. Alright, opponent on Gruel Aggro with Company. So how do we play this? Probably just take the Lenor Elves to slow them down. Could go for Company as the most powerful card. But we might draw a free booter or another hand disruption spell by then. And then silencer names probably Zurta Goblin. Or do we name Scavenging Ooze? They're more likely to want to play Goblin early and then they might play Ooze instead, but that's fine by me. Or we can name Ooze, because long-term, I guess, Ooze is the bigger issue. Because we can outsize Goblin pretty easily with double Marshall. So I guess we can name Scavenging Ooze here. Bone plays Goblin. Take it. And we'll hit them back. We have a lot of lords, so we might be able to actually outrace the opponents. Naming company also would have been totally reasonable with our silencer. For us alone, opponent stays back. So now if I play another Lord, this would trade for both creatures, but then I get access to Ooze, although only one green mana at the moment. And then Kudro can also start exiling creatures, so the Ooze doesn't grow as much. So, yeah, probably fine to send a Silencer. Even if I play another Lord, it would still trade for both of those next turn. Opponent takes it. So let's see if they have land for, for Collected Company. It's just going to be a Pelt Collector. Opponent's down to 10. Emissary. Don't know if they can afford to play Ooze here. But they do, so that's three more damage from Silencer. And now Thalia locks the opponent out of playing company for the foreseeable future. And our tactics is a nice removal spell to have access to as well. So let's say I were to attack. If I attack with everyone, they would try to double block my lords. And then jump Silencer. And then I can Dire Tactics to blow up one of the double blocks. 
and play Thalia afterwards. That sounds pretty good. And if they triple chump, that's of course great as well. Alright, so we can Dire Tactics for Ossodon. Opponent's taking lethal right now, so I'm not sure about this block. But yeah, they were pretty dead regardless. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Some hand disruption. Followed by some removal and banalish marshal. Opponents with a teamer flash deck with lots of counter spells. Sadly, don't have a two drop we can sneak into play before memory lapse. So, I might just take the brazen borrower then. Brainstorm can also help them hide some cards from my discard spells. Yeah, let's take the borrower. Would love to pick up Thalia next turn. This is definitely the matchup for it. Freebooter would be okay. Alright, we'll just uh, Thought Seize again. And take an Ambusher, although Ambusher I can Dire Tactics pretty cleanly. So I'll take a Memory Lapse. So next turn Marshall gets countered. And then we have to set up our Dire Tactics for the Wolf. Alright, they let Banalish Marshall resolve. Opponent makes a treasure with Magma Opus. Definitely a combo with Torrential Gearhulk, which is in their deck. We're hoping to find some more action. Alright, so I can play Silencer. And a Memory Lapse. Attack, and if they play Ambusher, we exile it. That works. Could have been better to attack first, because then they would have been more tempted to play the Ambusher, but that's okay. Opponent's gonna brainstorm. If they find Fabled Passage, they can maybe shuffle away the Ambusher, since we didn't take the Ambusher with Thoughtseize, so they might suspect us having some removal in hand. Opponent's just trying to hit their land drops to eventually gear hulk back Magma Opus, which is their big finisher. Alright, opponent passes. I'm gonna lead with Silencer again. And now what do we name? If it resolves. Opponent hasn't shuffled their library, so they still have Ambusher in there somewhere. Uh, they're gonna play it in response. And then I might need to name Torrential Gearhulk. Although I'm not gonna be happy if that other hits the battlefield. Their opponent does have six mana. Passes. Well, Thought Seize is a timely draw. Do they have Gearhulk? Just a Gross Barrel? And Magma Opus, Epiphany Magma Opus. They wouldn't be able to play even if they draw land, so easily take Epiphany here. Hit for seven. And then hope they. Don't top that Gearhawk, although if they do, they'll be a 2 life, so it's gonna be close. And our opponent concedes. Sweet, so we managed to dismantle the Teamer Flash deck. Alright, so we got to see our Black White Humans in action. 
Overall, the deck is pretty well positioned against anything more controlling or combo oriented with lots of non-creature spells. It is going to struggle against very linear creature decks like Mono Green Elves is probably the worst matchup any deck leading with turn one elf and ramping into a bunch of creatures is going to make it difficult for us since our disruption doesn't always line up and we don't have much spot removal. So that's a matchup where we would want some more copies of maybe Skyclave Apparition as a creature that helps us interact on the board. But the recent metagame has shifted more towards combo and control, which is where all these hand disruption effects and taxation effects come in handy. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.